Well, hey, welcome to Ethos Online, everybody. We're so glad you're hanging out with us today. And happy, happy Mother's, Mother's Day. Day. Happy Mother's Day to all the moms out there. We love you all so much. And uh, hey, if you're a little bit newer to Ethos, maybe this is your very first time checking us out and hanging out with us, uh, you're going to discover a couple things really quickly. That Number one, we are Jesus people. And, uh, and yet at the same time, it doesn't matter what you believe. Uh, we believe that everybody belongs here because we really lean into the idea and the fact that people matter. And so we love you so much. And we're so grateful that you would take some time out of your day to hang out with us here at Ethos. In fact, relationships are a big deal. Uh, so we want to show you a quick story from one of our small group leaders uh, and kind of what's happening during this season of stay at home and how we're still connecting relationally. Check this out. Hey Ethos family, this is Crystal and I have the honor of leading a small group called Restorative Wellness in which we speak on our mental, physical, spiritual, and emotional aspects as the Lord leads us through our journeys and also how to maintain our health and wellness, especially during this crazy time. I absolutely love connecting with the ladies throughout the week, either through a phone call, Marco Polo, or a Zoom call, just so that we can check in on each other. I read something not long ago that said, we all may be going through the same storm, but we are all experiencing something different. And the beauty about being in a small group is, it's a judgment-free zone. We are there to pray for one another, to love one another, encourage one another, and inspire one another, and to believe in what the Bible says and what God says. So I encourage you, if you're not already in a small group, to go ahead and do so, because remember, we are not in this alone. We are in this together. Be blessed, you guys, and happy Mother's Day. Well, hey, we're gonna go ahead and sing a few songs as we worship God together. And as we do, I wanna encourage you to lean into the lyrics and allow them to speak to your heart as we put ourselves in a position to really hear from and receive from God today.
Your breath. 
we just finished declaring out and singing out those words, great are you, Lord. In Jeremiah 10, 6, it says, no one is like you, O Lord. You are great and your name is mighty in power. Church, I just wanna pray together today that we continue to sing out God's greatness and continue to see his glory. Heavenly Father, we are so thankful for all that you are in our lives and all that you're doing. God, I pray that we continue to see you and to see your glory and to be able to sing out your greatness and who you are in our lives, that you continue to work in us and through us. God, that our eyes stay fixed on you. You are the author of our lives. You are the perfecter of our faith, God. And as we continue day in and day out, both individually and as a church, walk out the plans you have for us, God. We will continue to sing out how great you are and declare out your glory in our lives. God, use us, perfect our lives, and we're just continuing to walk in your plan and the path that you've set before us, both individually and as a church. We are so thankful for your grace, for your glory, and we will sing out every day, great are you, Lord. We're so thankful. In Jesus' name, amen. What's your mom good at? Something on the side of me. Jumping on the slide with you? Uh, she's a g great cook. What's mommy good at doing, Nora? The hash. Okay. Georgia, describe your favorite memory with your mom. Um, I want to do the show with her. My favorite memory is going to the park and going to Nana James. Something she says a lot is okay. Mom, is that a new shirt? I really like it. Okay. Isn't it so nice out today, Mom? Okay. What is an impression you can do of Mommy? They only need a time for dinner. What are we having, Mom? Some um, pizza. Oh, I love you, babies. You're so handsome. Why is Mommy the best? Because she loves me. You're cheeky. Why is mommy the best? Kisses. Oh, she gives you kisses? Yeah. Yeah. She's also really good at cooking, hosting, cheering you up, and, and being, being the, the best mom ever. ever. Love you, mommy. Bye. Well, hey, Ethos family, my name is Andrea, and I just want to say thank you for joining us online today. We are so honored that you are taking some time to hang out with us. If this is your first time checking us out, welcome. I know I can speak for everyone when we say thank you for taking some time out of your day to be with us. We would absolutely love to connect with you. So go to our homepage or click the link right here that says connect and fill out the card. And simply by letting us know that you joined us today, you are actually making a difference right here in our community. We will be donating $5 on your behalf to a local organization called People in Need as they are providing meals to families in need during this season. So today is an incredibly special day. We want to wish every single mom out there a very happy Mother's Day. And we want to celebrate and honor all of you. So today, from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m., we will be hosting a special time for all the moms at the Olentangy River Brewing Company. Moms, we have free coffee for you, flowers from Market Bloom, and a chance for photos with all of your loved ones. This is for all the moms in our community, so be sure to tell your friends and your neighbors to come and join you. And know that when you come, we will be honoring CDC guidelines and practicing social distancing. So this will be a safe time for you. We cannot wait to see all of our moms today. As we continue to navigate through this season and time of being home, we want to be sure we are providing you with resources to help you be your absolute best. Our small groups are all open for those looking for community right now. But even better, we have groups for all of our generational areas as well, from college aged all the way to elementary age. There is absolutely something for everyone. Groups meet digitally and it's a great way to continue to build community and friendships for all ages. All of our groups can be found on our website ethosoh.com. 
We hope you know this by now, but we aren't going to stop saying it. Generosity is our privilege. And when we love generously, we are also showing our faith and worship to God. So there are a few ways to practice generosity. And if you are new to checking us out, there is zero pressure for you to give. But if you want to, one option is text to give. And all you have to do is just text the number that is right there on the screen with how much you want to give. It's a simple, easy, and secure way. Or your other option, you can give right here online by clicking the giving link and following those details. And hey, if you have children, remember this is a great time to teach them about generosity by including them in your giving and explaining where those resources are going to make a difference in our city. Thank you for being a part of what God is doing. All right, I'm so excited to lean in with all of you for another teaching from our lead pastor, Jordan. Don't forget to follow along with the notes provided and engage with those around you, whether in the same room or digitally. There is something for you today, so let's listen together. Well, Ethos, thanks again for hanging out with us today. Hey, I want you guys to know in this really unique, uh, incredibly unprecedented season, hey, we've got you. Whatever it is that you need, we want to be in this thing together. In fact, we've created something called an Ethos Care Card. You can find it on our website. If you're watching us on YouTube or Facebook, simply go to ethosoh.com and click on the tab that says Care Card and let us know. Maybe you know of somebody that has a need around their home. It could be a single mom or an elderly person, or it could just be a family that's in need of some sort of practical thing. And we want to be involved with helping uh, helping meet those needs because we really do want to be a community of people that are that are in this thing together. So, hey, again, if you're newer to Ethos, thanks for hanging out today. It's a big deal to us that you would that you would be here, and uh, and it's Mother's Day, and so it's an incredibly special day at that. Yeah, you know, we we just want to encourage all of the moms out there. First of all, we want you to know that you know, obviously, you're thought of not just today, but every day, and. You pour so selflessly into those around you, constantly giving um, to the lives of your children and other people's children, and it's just such an amazing thing. You're leaving such an amazing legacy, and and we really, we're going to pray here in a moment, but before we do that, we wanted to highlight a really special group of women that maybe you're watching today, maybe you are listening at a, at a later time, um, and it would be for anyone, maybe you've experienced the loss of a child or maybe you've been really believing and desiring for children of your own and and for whatever reason that has not happened yet. And so we know that today can be um, maybe a little bit of a bittersweet experience for you. And so we just wanted to honor you in this moment and to make sure that you hear from us, from Ethos family, that you are not in this journey alone. Yeah. And there are people all around you who will pray with you, who will walk the journey with you. Um, and, and we really just, we wanted to take a moment and just pray and really just agree with you that you would experience the faithfulness of God in that area yeah. specifically. So before we go any further, we just wanna pray. Yeah, Father, we, um, we just love you so much. God, we're so thankful that you are who you are, Father, that you are a loving Father, that you're faithful, that we can trust you and we can depend on you. God, you promised us in your word that your mercy and your love are new for us every single day, that they never, ever run out. So God, you see every need that's represented. You know every heart, you know every fear, every thought, you know every situation that is being faced. Lord, we're asking that you would be present Father, that they would experience your peace, your comfort. God, that, they, that you would just speak to their hearts. God, that you would remind them of the things that you, you placed on the inside of them, of where those dreams first came from. God, that you would be seen as faithful in their lives. God, we're asking you to touch their bodies, to mm-hmm. touch their minds, to touch their hearts. And Father, we just ask that you would be in this teaching today. Father, that everything we would say, God, that you would breathe life into it. God, that you would touch every person that's listening, every person that's watching. Father, that you would bring encouragement and hope and healing. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Hey, shout out to uh, to my mom, by the way, and to my stepmom and to my mother-in-law. I have not forgotten about my mother-in-law <laughs> either. So love you all so much. And uh, I think, you know, what's 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 unique about moms as I've leaned in and watched who I think is one of the absolute best moms in my wife. 
as I've watched her parent our kids. Um, moms, I want you to know you are doing a lot better than you think you are. And moms are a lot harder than, on themselves than what dads are, ironically enough. And where would we be without our moms? We wouldn't be here, that's for sure. But side note, we wouldn't be here without dads either. We play a different role, nevertheless, an important role. And so, but in all seriousness, man, y'all are doing a lot better than what you than what you think you are. Court, I, I want to ask my wife a question real quick. If you were to say, what, what, what's the hardest thing, in your opinion, about being a mom? <laughs> I feel like I could give like a few different answers. I mean, like lack of sleep being at like the top of the list, but... I think more than anything, it's it's just um, the comparison, you know, constantly battling how you're measuring up to somebody else, how you're measuring up to, you know, this person who runs a blog and posts on Facebook and Instagram every day and has these perfect custom filters. And then you get on Pinterest and you realize that, like, you just suck at everything in life and so I think just just that, just the battle of comparison, you know, I, my goodness, like I learned, it was just like last week that I learned that you can have a filter on a filter. Like, what is that? It just becomes so discouraging that you realize that the things that we're constantly seeing every day are so far from what is real. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's, um, it, it, it's basically comparison. So you're saying that you comparing yourself to others, which I think is something that everybody struggles with. But, but, but like going off of that, maybe a little bit, what would you say would be uh, maybe one of the interesting things that you could share, kind of a funny comical story about being a mom, maybe even as it relates to comparing? Um, I feel like we could like share a few Judah stories because he <laughs> Our provides son, five us, years old. Yeah. He gives us a lot of material, yeah. but one that sticks out, a lot in my mind is um, just this last December, we had just gone over like a kind of a rough hump with Judah. Like he was, it was like, it seemed like every four weeks he was like spiking a fever. He was like missing a week of school. And so we were in this point again. And when, I don't know how you guys are, but like when my kids, when they're sick and they have a fever or it's like anything in their chest or throwing up, like I sleep in the same room as them. I don't want to leave them alone. And so Jordan actually gave Judah and me our room. So Judah and I are in bed together. And I think we're going on like night four, maybe night five of him, like having a decently high fever, wasn't sleeping, which meant I was not sleeping. And so got up that morning and he, his fever had finally broke. And I walk out, like I pretty much just like lived in our, our room for those few days. And so I walk out into the rest of our house and like our kitchen, dining room and living area are kind of like, all one space and I look and I'm like what in the world happened in here like there was stuff everywhere I think the pillows from our couch were on on our table on our dining room table which I don't know why I don't know what like who had that idea but it was just random and it was a mess and I was like you know what I haven't showered in a few days so before I even tackle this I'm going to take a shower and I'm going to feel a little bit better about myself. So I'm in the shower. All of a sudden, Judah opens the door. He's like, Mom, come here. Come see who's here. Somebody's here to see you. And I was like, okay. I'm like, who in the world is he talking about? Like a lot of times, you know, if the doorbell rings. He knows what it is. And he always wants me to see who's there. So I'm assuming it's that or maybe my mom or my sister stopped over. So I finish taking my shower. I get out. I see that. Jordan had called me like twice, I think, sent me a couple text messages, and I read the text, and it says, um, our, our realtor from when we bought our condo is in our house. I was like, I called him. I'm like, what do you mean she's in our house? He's like, Judah let her in. I was like, oh, my gosh. So... I'm like in panic mode because one, I'm like, okay, I just got out of the shower. Because like, we, have, we have one of those ring doorbells, you know, so I could see what was going on. Yeah. So I get out of the shower. I'm, you know, obviously not dressed appropriately to meet somebody, especially somebody that I don't really know. And then I remember what my house looks like. And so all the moms, all the wives out there, like you, you know exactly like in this moment, you're just like, oh my gosh. So I like slowly open the door and I hear her calling my name and I was like, hello? Like, 
I'm so sorry. Can you give me like five minutes? I just stepped out of the shower. You can just give me a few minutes. And she's like apologizing. She's like, no, 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 no. I'll just leave this on the counter. I'm so sorry. So I get out. And of course, like I feel the need to explain myself. So I send her an email. I'm telling her, I'm like, hey, I'm, I just am so sorry. I was like, we actually bought a specific lock for the top of our door because Judah will open it for anybody. I didn't know it wasn't latched. And I was like, and I feel the need to like explain to you why my house was such a disaster. And so I go through the whole story. She responds, she's like, oh my gosh, you're fine. I thought it was funny. I shouldn't have even come in. She's like, but I called my daughter on the way home to tell her the story. And when I'm telling her the story, she said, she said her daughter goes, wait a second, Jordan, and he's a pastor. Is he the pastor at Ethos? She's like, I think so. I think that's what the church is called. She's like, I just visited there for the first time on Sunday. So I was like, you <laughs> gotta be kidding me so uh, you know you, some days you you do great and other days you just you don't it just is what it is sometimes sometimes it feels like everybody else is crushing life except for you and i know that moms experience that feeling um, probably more so than maybe some others because you're comparing what one mom is doing with their kids versus what you're doing or not doing and all of these different things that just come into play as it relates to falling prey to the trap of comparison. We, we've identified that I think there's three areas of our lives where we really compare um, in a negative sense. The first one is we, we begin to compare kind of who we are. Um, we, we compare our backgrounds. We compare kind of where we grew up. We compare our appearance. We compare our pedigree or education to that of somebody else's. And you probably noticed this before, but comparison is really the thief of joy. Anytime that you begin to compare what you're doing to somebody else, you immediately lose all peace, all joy. Your anxiety kind of goes up to a whole other level. And the struggle really is that we often compare what we see in our own lives behind the scenes to what we see in everybody else's lives as their highlight reels, which feels like there's this massive gap between your life and somebody else's. And so we we struggle with the comparison and, and feeling like I'm comparing who I am versus who somebody else is. The second thing that we do is we compare what we do. We just compare our accomplishments or lack thereof to somebody else's accomplishments or lack thereof, which really kind of leads to two extremes, right? If you feel like you're doing better than somebody else, you fall prey to pride and kind of this superiority complex. And if you feel like you're doing worse than somebody else, you fall prey to depression and feeling like you don't measure up and you kind of begin to uh, fall prey to that feeling and that sense that you're not worthy at all. And so we compare who we are, what we do. And then I think lastly, we really compare what God has done. Yeah, you know, I think um, so often we watch things that are happening in other people's lives and we see God do something for for someone else that we've been wanting him to do for us and we mm. begin to compare. And you know, I think that the the danger side of comparison is that when we really lean into that, what we're doing is we're saying that God's yes for someone else is God's no for us. And I think that there's there's obviously like there's so much that comes from that there's so much question and doubt and insecurity that really is stirred up in that that kind of thinking you know that if if god does this for this person then he can't do it for me mm. and i think there's a, just a completely different angle for us to to really come at those situations from and that's to celebrate I think if we can celebrate over comparing, yeah. because where comparison says that God's yes for someone else is God's no for us, celebrating actually says that God's yes for somebody else is actually us remembering his faithfulness for all. Yeah. And so, you know, I think there's just something that we need to lean into in that and remembering that, man, there's there's a great opportunity that we have every time we see somebody do, we see God do something for somebody else that we can celebrate in that moment and mm. remember how faithful he is. Yeah. I, I like when we were kind of going over some of our notes, Courtney made a comment that I thought was really cool I wanted to lean into. And it was that, that the greatest protection against comparison is to remember God's faithfulness. And can you unpack that a little bit, babe? Yeah. You know, I think um, Isaiah chapter 46, verse 9, it says, it says this. It says, Remember the things I've done in the past, for I alone am God. I am God, and there is no one like me. And, you know, God never encourages us, instructs us, or teaches us to lean into comparison. 
and to fall prey to just the things that come from that. But right. he does tell us to remember. Yeah. He's telling us to remember all of the things that he's already done, whether in our own lives or somebody else's life, yeah. to remember how faithful he is. In Lamentations chapter 3, starting in verse 21, it says, but there's, no, uh, but there's one other thing I remember, and in remembering, I keep a grip on hope. Mm. And this is, I, I just love, I think this paints like such a perfect picture of what it is that we're remembering. He says, God's loyal love could not have run out. His yeah. merciful love cannot dry up. They are created new every morning. How great is your faithfulness? I'm sticking with God. I'll say it over and over. He's all I've got left. So every time that we choose, because it is a choice. So every time we choose to, to celebrate, to remember, instead of comparing, we're choosing to, to, place our grip to keep Mm. our grip on remembering the hope that we have in in Jesus Christ, which is God's love doesn't run out. It is loyal through and through his mercy. It's never, it's never going to come to an end. Mm. Every single morning that we wake up, every morning we wake up with breath in our lungs, God starts over. Mm. It's a fresh, fresh opportunity for us to see his love, his mercy and his faithfulness. Yeah. You're a really great mom. Thank you. You really are. There, there's, I think in, in contrast to comparing, I think we need to learn to remember. So if we can say it like this, we compare who we are, we compare what we do, and we often compare what God has done, but really we need to remember who we are, remember what we do, and remember what God has done. Let me unpack it like this. We got to remember who we are. First and foremost, rather than comparing who we are, we got to remember who we are, that you are a child of God. You're a son and you're a daughter of the Most High. And it doesn't matter whether you are younger or older. You got to lean into oftentimes remembering that God cares for you as a good mother, a good father cares for their own children. In fact, in Galatians chapter 4, verse 4, it's one of my favorite scriptures in all of the, in all of the Bible where the, the Apostle Paul writes that when the set time had fully come, God sent his son Jesus, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those under the law that we might receive adoption to sonship. There's so much that we could say there, but as we move on to verse 6, it says, because you are his sons, God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, the spirit who calls out, Abba, Father. The original language there in the, the, the meaning for that phrase, Abba, Father, it's the most endearing and intimate term we find in all of the scriptures. It's the equivalent of when a child looks up at you and says, Daddy, if you're a father, you know that that will melt your heart. I've got an 11-year-old daughter, and when she looks at me and she calls me Daddy, I'm like, girl, what do you want? Like, you, you get it. Like, whatever you want, it is yours, right? And because there's something so precious about that term, Daddy, and we don't often think, and it's kind of almost comical when we, when we think in terms of calling God Daddy, um, but in many ways, that's the intimacy in the relationship that God is calling us into in relationship to Him. And so you got to remember, that's who you are. And when God sees you, He doesn't see all the junk of your past. He sees you in your present condition and says, you are my son, you are my daughter, and man, I love you. And in return, we can go to him and be like, Dad, thank you for your love. That my love for God is not, or rather I should say, God's love for me is not conditional upon my love or my uh, pedigree and things that I've done, my accomplishments towards him. No, it's just purely conditional upon what Jesus did on that cross where he said, I have taken upon your sins so that you could be made right with God. So that all the shame that you once experienced as it related to the separation that you felt because of your mistake in your error, I've done away with all of that. You're now my son and you're my daughter. And the second thing is we got to remember what we do. Not compare what we do, but remember what we do. That we got to remember our calling from God, our purpose from God, the dreams that God has laid on our hearts, that we are never to give up, even in the midst of adversity. Even a season like we're in right now, that you may be facing some serious challenges, whether it be economically, emotionally, mentally, relationally, with this whole stay-at-home season, that we don't compare what somebody else is doing, what we're seeing on Instagram, what somebody else may be experiencing, but no, we remember what God has called us to, 
and that that calling has not been dismissed by God. That just because the season may, might feel challenging now and the wind and the waves might try to kind of knock you off course. No, no, God's like, no, I still got you. That God will use, like he says in Romans 8, verse 28, that God will use all things for the good. He'll work them all together for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purpose. Yeah, and then the third thing that we need to remember, like Jordan said, is what God has done. Mm. And again, this is this is his faithfulness. This is yeah. taking a moment to look back and and to really remember all of the times that we have seen him faithful in our lives and other people's lives, whether we know them or not. You know, um, there's a story in the beginning of Luke that I really want us to kind of look at, and I want to give some context before I, I read a few scriptures. Um, in the beginning of Luke, we read about a woman whose name is Elizabeth, and Elizabeth is an older cousin to a woman named Mary. Mary is the mother of Jesus. And in the beginning of Luke, we like Luke paints this picture, and he tells us about, you know, Elizabeth and her husband have been trying for years and years and years to get pregnant. They, they don't have any children, and at this time, like, you had as many children as you could. This was not a time where people chose not to have, have any. Um, this was your legacy, and it was a big deal. And so for, for them, it was heartbreaking. And it was not only a personal dream that they had and a desire that they had, but for everyone around them, they talked down to them. They talked about them very poorly. It actually says that their friends, that people who knew Elizabeth referred to her as barren. And when you actually look up the meaning of that word, it means worthless. Mm -hmm. It means a waste. So if you can imagine for a moment approaching an older age, you have tried for years to get pregnant. You've been believing yeah. God for years for a child. And those around you who are supposed to care for you and about you and support you are telling you that you're a waste because you don't have any children. Mm. And and so we kind of pick up here in the story where an angel appears to her husband and tells her at this time, now Elizabeth is physically too old to have children. Yeah. Luke actually refers to her as very old. So <laughs> I don't know exactly what that age is. Clearly Luke is a man because any woman would never <laughs> word it that way. But so, so anyways, they refer to her and say she's very old. She's physically past the age of it being possible for her to have children. And an angel appears to her husband, tells her husband, hey, you're going to have a child. Elizabeth is pregnant. You're going to give birth to us. She's going to give birth to a mm -hmm. son and you're to name him John. And so then fast forward just a little bit, a few months, and an angel appears to Mary and the angel tells Mary, Mary, you, you know, God is so pleased with you. He, he wants to use you in a really special way and you're going to become pregnant. You're going to give birth to a son. You're to name him Jesus. Mm -hmm. And this is the Messiah. This is the Savior of the world. Mm -hmm. Naturally, Mary is like, what? You know, there's a lot of yeah. questions. Her first one being, I've never been with a man. How is this possible? And mm -hmm. so we're going to keep this super G-rated because I know this is like family viewing. So we're not going to explain. You all know what we're talking about. Mary's never done what needs to be done in order for her to be pregnant. So naturally, she's got a lot of questions. The stork has never come. It has never come. Okay. So, so this is kind of where we pick up in the story, where, where I can't even take you seriously when you say that. You're very young, by the way, not very old. <laughs> Thank you. Very young. So anyways, this is a serious story. So, so we pick up in the story where Mary is, is just, she can't believe what this angel is telling her. And in verse 31 of Luke, verse, I'm sorry, verse 36 of Luke chapter 1, listen to what the angel tells Mary. He says, remember your relative Elizabeth. I'm like, it's kind of interesting, right? He doesn't start off by remember God. He doesn't start off by God said. Mm -hmm. He starts off, the first thing he tells her is remember Elizabeth. It was said that she cannot have children, that she herself is now six months pregnant, mm -hmm. even though, here it is, even though she is very old. So even the angel says she's very old? Yeah. Okay. For there is nothing that God cannot do. And I think this is like the embodiment of 
why we remember, of why we celebrate mm-hmm. in other people's stories, of what God is was doing in other people's lives, yeah. that we take a moment and we realize, yeah. man, if God is doing it for them, God will be faithful for me. God uses Elizabeth. Mm. Elizabeth, think for a minute what this would have looked like. What if this never happened? What if Elizabeth never went through her journey of infertility? What if Elizabeth never, never had all those years of just walking through the heartache, through getting to the point to where it was physically impossible for her to become pregnant with a child. And yet God needed that. God needed that story. He used that story. That's what he used to speak hope into the heart of Mary in that moment. So he could say, hey, Mary, the miracle that I'm about to do in your life, you can can trust, Mm -hmm. you can rest assured that you can count on me, that you can count me faithful because look what I did over here in this situation. If we could encourage you in anything today, whatever season of life you're in, whatever it is that you're facing, remember, remember this person's story. Remember Mm. this family member's story. Remember this stranger's story that you saw on TV who you don't even know. Mm. Remember what God has done. Remember the faithfulness. Mm. I mean, you might be in this season, especially you might be just faced with so many challenges. It might be, maybe you've lost your job. Maybe there's been cuts at your job and you're taking a, a really significant pay cut. Maybe you are facing what seems like it just an impossible diagnosis in your body. Mm. Maybe there's just a, um, a, a really challenging relationship. Maybe it's your marriage and you feel like man, you and your spouse, you just can't seem to click. It mm. seems like you've gone too far down this road. Mm. And now, now what? You don't think that there is any hope left. Mm. Could I encourage you in this? Could you take a look around today? Could you, could you kind of take inventory and remember all of the times that God has moved and done miracles in somebody else's life. Can you remember Elizabeth? Mm. Can you take a moment? Can you choose to celebrate? Because in celebrating, and every single time we choose to celebrate over comparing, Mm. we choose to remember the faithfulness of God. And Mm. if I can choose to celebrate for somebody else, I'm choosing to remember that God is faithful for all. So, so so what do we do in in that in-between season? Yeah. Because it's that it's it's that season for Elizabeth where all of the years that she was waiting, that's when it's hard. Mm. It's not it's not the one day, it's it's not the one week, it's not even the one month. It's the years, it's it's the long journey, it's that process, it's in that waiting. And listen to what Isaiah forty verse thirty one says. It says, But those who wait upon God, they get fresh strength. Yeah. They spread their wings and they soar like eagles. They run and they do not get tired. They walk and they do not lag behind. Yeah. Why? Because if we choose in the waiting to remember, yeah. we're taking a grip on hope, on the faithfulness, on the love of God. Yeah. So as we close, I want us to think about this for just a moment. What, what would our days, our thoughts, kind of even our view of ourselves be like if we lived in remembrance of God, not in comparison to others? You know, our, our natural inclination is to compare rather than to remember. But really following Jesus is all about remembering who he is, not comparing who you are. It's, it's when we do that that we find it in our hearts to do what sometimes feels impossible to do, which is to love ourselves exactly with it. God loves us and to recognize that there's nobody else who loves you like he loves you. There's nobody else who cares about you like he cares about you. There's nobody else who wants the best for you like he wants the best for you. I, 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 was, I was just thinking just last night, actually, as we were kind of going through some of our notes and uh, my, my, my kids from a really young age, I've kind of taught them that every time that, that I wink at them, I kind of give them a little, a little over-exaggerated wink. They, they respond and they wink back. When they do, it's kind of just this thing that we've done that indicates that I, I'm for them, that I'm with them. Sophie, not too long ago, was at tennis practice, and she was kind of having a rougher practice and, uh, and just kind of kept missing some of her serves and kept hitting the net. She, I could tell she was getting frustrated and and she didn't like that everybody else was watching her and all of her peers were watching her. Coach kept encouraging her to try it again. And he was doing a great job encouraging her. But just for a moment, she finally looked up at me. And I was up at the top, kind of in the balcony. And she made eye contact with me. Just just for a brief second, I, I just gave her one of those winks. And just in that moment, she winked back. And she just, 
She got the courage again just to, let me try this again. I just want to encourage us. I don't even know why I'm getting emotional, but I just want to encourage us. I think that that's God. Man, I, I believe that even in this moment right now, God's just winking at you. He's like, man, I'm for you. I got you. In this season, Mom, I got you. With those little ones, I got you. With those older ones, I've got you. If they're running from the Lord, I've got you. I don't know what you're going through, maybe even at your work, like Courtney said, but I just believe that God is in this moment today wanting to remind you, I've got you. If you're watching with us today or you're listening, whatever, wherever you're at, if you don't know Jesus, but you want to, and you want him really to reveal his love to you in a new way, and you want to place your trust and your faith and all of your hope and your confidence in him, I want to pray for you today. In fact, no matter where you're at, I want to ask too that as we pray together, you would let us know because we do want to follow up with you. And we want to let you know that we are in this journey of faith together. But if you want to place your faith in Jesus, whether for the first time or you want to recommit your life to Christ on this Mother's Day weekend, I want to pray for you. I want to lead you in this prayer. I'm going to simply ask that you would close your eyes and just repeat these words after me. Let's say this. Heavenly Father, I thank you for Jesus. I believe that he's the Son of God. I believe that he died for me, and that he rose from the dead so that I could be saved. And on this day, I call upon the name of Jesus, and my life will never be the same again. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, hey, listen, we love you so much. We miss you. Uh, again, if you need anything, don't forget, man, here at Ethos, we are in this thing together. And let's continue to support and encourage one another. Uh, knowing that the best really is yet to come.